First, there's an auto mode, which uses preset activation and deactivation times from your code. You can watch the relays in action according to the time settings in our code. For the second option, we have manual controls. Simply navigate to the IP address initially displayed on the OLED screen to access the control buttons. This feature is accessible via both mobile and desktop device. Hello and welcome back to yet another amazing tutorial on Mason Up. Today, we embark on an exciting journey to create an advanced smart socket that can update its software, automate operations based on your schedule, and provide real-time feedback, all without the hassle of apps or RTC modules. Sounds interesting right? Let's dive in. To start, you'll need to gather some essential components. Here's our list. Node MCU Wi-Fi module, an OLED display, AC to DC module, active buzzer, two relay modules, three AC sockets, three switches and lastly, some connecting wires. Building the enclosure. Once you've got all your components, it's time to create the housing unit for our project. Our smart socket deserves a sturdy and stylish home. We'll use a 3D printer to craft both the front and back panels. If you're new to 3D printing or don't have access to one, wooden or PVC sheets are effective alternatives. Assembling the hardware. Assembling the hardware is like solving a jigsaw puzzle. Let's start with the AC sockets. We're using repurposed ones from an old extension board, but you can purchase new ones from your nearest hardware store. Next, we'll add three switches for manual control and feedback. In our case, we will be using these fantastic 12mm metal switches. They have a built-in LED indicator and are water and dust proof. Feel free to choose any that are available to you. code overview and upload. Before we can move on to assembling the remaining components, let's dive into the Node MCU and code the heart of our project. For those unfamiliar, you might want to watch our getting started video, the link is on the top right corner. Let's dive in. At the outset, we've included several essential libraries. These enable our ESP8266 to connect to Wi-Fi, host a web server, perform over-the-air firmware updates, retrieve the current time from an NTP server and interface with the OLED display. Next, we define some constants and initialize the OLED display. Note the SSID and password, which are your Wi-Fi credentials. Ensure you modify these to match your own network. The NTP client is initialized to fetch the current time from pool.ntp.org. Additionally, arrays for days and months are set up for our clock display. Pins for CO2, buzzer, and light are defined. Customize the variables as you see fit for your project. Following this, we have set the activation and deactivation times for both CO2 and light. The core logic activates the CO2 and light relays based on these times. However, there's a twist. Users can manually override this automated action through a web interface. Once overridden, the automation halts for a set duration, 30 minutes in our case. Feel free to change to your need. We've also set up global variables to track the current time, CO2, and light statuses, manual override flags and buzzer timings. Define your preferred activation and deactivation times in a 24-hour format to test this feature later. We've designed several utility functions for specific tasks. Buzzer on and buzzer off to manage the buzzer. Wi-Fi connect to link our board to the Wi-Fi and provide feedback on the OLED. Clock display to showcase the current time. Text scroll to display scrolling text. CO2 activation and light activation for time-based activation and deactivation. Buzzer status for the buzzer alert when CO2 or light states change. Display CO2 status and display light status to display the CO2 and light statuses. Within the setup function, we begin our serial communication, launch the web server, and establish endpoints for manual control. Users can access the root URL to control CO2 and light or even update the firmware. For automation, the setup also initializes the OLED, sets the pin modes, connects to Wi-Fi, and activates the NTP client. Lastly, we call all the necessary functions within the loop. Uploading the code. After tweaking the code to your liking, integrate it into the MCU. 
It's like teaching our socket how to think and act. Choose the correct board and port, press upload, and wait a moment, it might take a few seconds to compile and upload. With the brain, node MCU ready, we transition back to the body. Install the OLED display. AC to DC module. Node MCU. And reel is using hot glue or double sided tape. Ensure secure and safe connections. Let's move on to wiring our project. Feel free to pause the video and follow the provided wiring diagram. Please note, working with AC current is extremely dangerous and can be lethal. Always double check connections, and if you're uncertain, consult an expert. After the wiring, let's run a quick test to ensure functionality. As you initiate, you'll notice the reel is an OLED spring to life. Once satisfied, add a touch of creativity by making the socket wall mountable, drill a hole in the back and secure the back panel with screws. Test your assembly one final time. The OLED should light up, and components should operate as programmed. If issues arise, troubleshoot them, this phase confirms your diligent efforts result in flawless operations. With the assembly finalized, let's get to the most exciting part, exploring its incredible features. Let's see our DIY smart socket in action. First up, enabling the smart socket and understanding its behavior. Turn on the primary leftmost switch, the first socket powers up as normal and also initializes the device's smart features. Make a note of the IP address displayed on the OLED screen, you'll need it later. By default. The remaining two sockets stay off and can be activated in three different modes, which we'll delve into shortly. Now, let's explore over-the-air updates. To test this, open your Arduino IDE and make your desired adjustments on the code. For this demonstration, we'll change the activation and deactivation times of the relays to one-minute intervals. Be sure to update the firmware version number as well, so you can confirm the upload was successful. To upload your changes, go to Sketch and select Export Compiled Binary.
Next, open your web browser and go to the IP address you noted earlier, appending forward slash update at the end. Locate and upload the saved binary file. If successful, the OLED screen will confirm the new firmware version. Let's move on to the remaining two sockets. As we discussed, these can be operated in three ways. First, there's an auto mode, which uses preset activation and deactivation times from your code. You can watch the relays in action according to the time settings in our code. For the second option, we have manual controls. Simply navigate to the IP address initially displayed on the OLED screen to access the control buttons. This feature is accessible via both mobile and desktop devices. The third option lets you use manual buttons located directly on the socket hardware. Lastly, marvel at how our smart socket doubles as a real-time clock. It continually fetches and displays the time on the OLED screen, making your smart socket not just a utility but also a unique piece of wall art. That's a wrap. You now own a socket that's not just smart but also a testament to your ingenuity and creativity. For any issues you may encounter, feel free to leave a comment, and we'll try to help you out. If you found this tutorial valuable, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Thanks for tuning in, and remember, the future is now, so let's create something incredible.